If you have to transfer money internationally, the easiest way to do it is through Bitcoin. This is the money of the future. This is what everyone is going to use in the future. And that's why I have decided to sell all my stocks and put everything in Bitcoin. Before I lose subscribers, no, this is a joke. I did not do that. But seriously, there is this real issue of transferring money internationally. It is costly because of so many fees and also it is time consuming. Maybe in the future, when elephants would be flying, then Bitcoin maybe might be the solution. But today we need another solution, a wiser solution. And that's why one of the stocks I'm currently buying is WISE, which is a British fintech company that you can use to transfer money internationally faster and cheaper compared to traditional methods such as the normal banking system, what we call wire transfer, or maybe even MoneyGram and Western Union or even PayPal. To understand how WISE actually works and why it is able to achieve faster and cheaper international transactions, let me tell you a story, a true story. I have a friend who lives on the other side of the ocean and he needed to send me some money. We considered various platforms to send that money. Maybe we could use the normal banking system wire transfer, but there are many fees involved because of currency conversion. There are so many security measures that the banking system has, for example, SWIFT, that in each step, there are fees involved. You could have used PayPal, but in the countries involved, in order for you to make a transaction, international transaction on PayPal, you had to wait 28 days. And the best solution that we thought of was to use WISE. WISE was cheaper and also it was faster. If my friend wants to send me money from India, and let's say there is someone from Mauritius here, where I am, and they want to send money to India to their friend, that money doesn't have to leave the country. That other person who is sending money to India, his money can come to me and my friend's money can go to that person who is receiving money in India. So there is no real international transactions involved. The money that I'm receiving is from someone in my own country and the money that my friend is sending, they are sending it to someone in their own country. Of course, it is all anonymous. They will not know where their money actually went. At the end of the day, the amount of money that I was supposed to receive, I received the exact amount. The amount of money that my friend sent me, he was able to send the exact amount. So it doesn't make any difference for us, the users. But the transactions involved is totally different. The money you're sending is not leaving your home country. WISE is expanding its business beyond just international money transfers. It is now allowing users to have international bank accounts on the platform. You are able to set up a bank account with different currencies. And of course, you are paid an interest on that. And just like a normal bank, WISE is going to make more money by interest through spread. So when you put your money on WISE, they are going to use that money to buy bonds. And let's say they are going to be paid 4% on the bond. They are going to give you an interest, let's say 2%. So WISE make a 2% profit on the spread. So even if you're putting your money on WISE, they are making money. There's nothing wrong with that. This is what banks do. When you save your money in the bank, the bank is going to use that money and buy bonds usually, and they are going to be paid a higher interest rates compared to what they are paying you. And if we are going to see an environment with higher interest rates, like we are right now, maybe in the coming years, in the coming decades, interest rates are going to be higher compared to what they have been in the past decades, if we see that, of course, this is going to be good for the business of WISE. You have to understand something though. WISE is not a bank. It is not registered as a bank but they have banking partners, for example, JP Morgan Chase. But of course, like any other regulated financial company, they have some security measures. If you're going to save your money on WISE, you're opening a bank account there. It's not a real bank account. The money is going to be stored in a bank, let's say JP Morgan Chase. They are not going to lend that money. They are not a bank. They are not allowed to lend that money. They can invest in bonds, but that money is always separated from the money they are operating with. So your cash is not being used by the company to run their business. It is stored somewhere somewhere else in the vaults of JP Morgan Chase. WISE is operating in a huge growing market and every year they are adding new partners all around the globe. 
Why these partners are important? Because WISE is here only for mostly international money transfer or for you to have an international bank account. But if let's say you have to pay, you're not going to use WISE directly to pay for something, but you can use Google Pay, which is one of the partners of WISE. And that's how WISE has been able to grow its revenues by over 30% annually for the past few years. And the company is even profitable with growing margins. With the international banking business, they have been able to further increase their margins because this is a very profitable business. And you have to think about the next 10, 20 years. Where do you see the future in 10, 20 years? Will there be more international transaction? Will there be more people who will require an international bank account? Of course, the answer is yes to both of these questions. I'm not saying that WISE is going to be the only platform that is going to conquer the world. There's going to be other platforms. In some cases, for merchants, for example, PayPal probably is going to be better than WISE. But the market for WISE itself is going to grow. The market for all of these companies is going to grow and each one of them will try to gain maximum market share. WISE is definitely going to expand its market. Even though in recent years there has been a decline in globalization, people are moving more abroad, people are traveling more, people are making more transfers internationally, people have friends now all over the world and they have to transfer money. Venmo is useful in the United States, but if you have to go elsewhere, you have to find other solutions, other platforms to use and WISE is one of them. And when you're traveling, you have to book hotels all around the world and it is easy to do on booking.com, which is the second stop I'm going to talk about today. The company is really called Booking Holdings because it goes more than just booking.com. It also owns Priceline, Agoda, Kayak, and rentalcars.com. All of these company falls under the umbrella of Booking Holdings. But the main one is of course, booking.com which is the most widely used website in the world to book hotels. This is what I've always used. I've never used Airbnb, I've never used Expedia or TripAdvisor to book hotels. I've always used Booking.com. And there are tens of millions of people who will agree with me. Now, when you look at the stock, the first thing that comes to your mind is that the stock is at all time high. Why invest in a stock that is at all time high? Why invest in a company valued at around 128 billion US dollars? Well, a stock being at all time high doesn't mean anything. It all comes down to valuation. In my conservative estimate, I believe that booking holdings can generate 10 billion US dollars in owners earnings every year. And for a market cap of 130 billion US dollars, that's around 13 times earnings. It doesn't seem so expensive anymore and it is a growing company. The definition of owner's earning is that it is the amount of cash that the company can, in theory, return to shareholders. In the case of booking holdings, there is something interesting that makes the amount of cash that the company is generating more than the net income, and that is deferred merchant bookings. Let's say you have booked on booking.com you have booked a hotel on booking.com or you have booked some activities. The cash that you're giving to booking holdings, it is not being transferred to the hotel immediately. Maybe it is going to be transferred of a free month. The hotel is not receiving that amount immediately. The hotel is receiving it only when you make the purchase. So let's say you already paid on booking holdings today, but eventually you are going to stay in the hotel after free month. That's only when it is going to be accounted as net income on the statements of Booking Holdings. But in the meantime, the cash is in the hands of Booking Holdings and they can use that cash to do whatever they want. They can reinvest in the company, they can buy back shares. In a way, it is like insurance. You receive the cash in advance, the insurance float, and then you are going to deliver the services later. And there is a difference between owners earnings and free cash flow. It's because of stock-based compensation. When we are considering free cash flow, we don't remove the stock-based compensation because it is a non-cash expense. But in the case of owner's earnings, we should not be counting the stock-based compensation because this is cash that is going to the employees of the company, not really the owners. So it's not owner's earnings. It's not earnings going to the owners. In practice, it is going to increase the number of shares. So your ownership of the company is going to go down. Booking Holdings is one of the few companies that boast about having a low stock-based compensation. This further increases the 
owner's earnings of the company. As a shareholder, this is what you're looking for, that the company is returning cash to you. They can, of course, invest, reinvest in the business to grow the business, but there is a limited amount of things that they can do. And in the case of Booking.com, Booking Holdings, they have been able to become such a big company that it is easier for them to just buy back shares and return cash to shareholders like this. And I have been adding Booking.com to my portfolio for the past couple of months, and it is now the sixth largest position in my portfolio. Speaking of my portfolio, let's play a game. This is a game we are going to play in every video. My portfolio today has a value of 55,300 US dollars. And let's say every month I can add 200 US dollars and I'm expecting that over the long term, I'm going to make 15% a year. So of course, I want to be that. I want to be able to put more than 200 US dollars on my portfolio. I want to make even more than 15%. But for simplicity, let's use these two numbers. They gave me that every time I have to tell you the value of my portfolio and some other recent moves I have made in my portfolio. With the goal is to reach 100,000 US dollars. And according to some online calculator, it's going to be in 2027. But I want you also to play the game. I don't know how big is your portfolio, but every month you have to consistently add more money to your portfolio. So choose a number, a number that you can safely and consistently add to your portfolio. So it should not be too big. You can always add more, but don't add less than you have promised. Of course, you don't have to show me your portfolio, but I want you to participate in this game, to play this game. Be because if we just watch YouTube videos without actually committing to investing, we are not going to make money over the long term. That's how we play the game, by actually investing. The third stock that we are going to talk about today is not one that is growing at a fast rate like WISE or even growing at a moderate rate like Booking Holdings. It is actually not growing at all. And that stock is Kohl's, KSS, one of the declining department stores. So why am I buying this stock? It's because it is undervalued. There are different types of undervalued companies. Some companies are growing and they are undervalued. So maybe they are growing by 10% a year, the revenues of the company, even the profits of the company. So you expect that over the long term, the company is going to be bigger than what it is today. And the market is not really considering the growth, for example, that much. That's why it is undervalued. One example is WISE. And then there are companies that are undervalued, but they are not growing. Here, Kohl's is the example. It is not a growing company, but it is still undervalued. But here you need a bigger margin of safety. You cannot say that you're investing in a company. It is undervalued by only 15% and it is a good investment, but it is not growing. If it is not growing, you need a bigger margin of safety. There needs to be a good enough reason why it is undervalued. And most of the time, these companies, you're not going to hold them forever. You hold them once you reach that intrinsic value. There's no good reason for you to hold a company. You just take your profits. Now, if a company is growing, maybe you can hold it forever. It was undervalued when you bought, for example, when I bought Meta, and now I'm still holding Meta, even though it is not undervalued anymore. We have good reasons to worry about calls. Online retailers are gaining market share compared to physical retailers. We know that malls are in decline. But if you look at the business of calls, it's not about the big malls. It's mostly about the strip malls. And they are conveniently located compared to many other competitors. Their recent partnership with Sephora, which is owned by LVMH, is also going to help the company. Because most of the new Sephora stores in the United States now are being built by Kohl's. So if you want to buy some products from Sephora, maybe you don't want to buy it online, you want to try the real products, try it on your face and see how it works. I don't know, I don't use this. But I did visit one Sephora store. It was a waste of time. I did visit. I was just standing there and doing nothing. Okay, let's continue the video. If you're visiting the Sephora store, you're likely going to buy other things from Kohl's. And that's why over the long term, I believe that even though revenues are declining, they are going to stabilize and probably even grow over the long term. With the current debt repayment schedule, there is no risk that Kohl's is going to go bankrupt. Many people are also afraid that maybe Kohl's will be unable to pay its dividends. Right now, the dividend yield is around 9%, which is quite high. It's high because the stock price is low. Because dividend yield is calculated by taking the dividends paid divided by the stock price. The dividend that Kohl's is paying compared to the earnings they are making, it is quite high, but it is sustainable. 
I believe that even over the long term, Kohl's will be able to pay this dividend. Of course, I would have preferred that they paid less in dividends and use all that cash to buy back shares. Because today, 45% of the float of course is short and if course buy back its shares the float is going to be even smaller which can potentially lead to a short squeeze like it is happening with zim which i have in my portfolio i would recommend you watch this video have a nice day and goodbye